today's lab, we are going to extract or remove caffeine from tea. And when we talk about the word extract, it's really, or extraction process in general, it's really a way that we can take, remove one component from this mixture, i.e. what we're trying to remove is caffeine, and put it in another component. The other component eventually that we're going to put it in is this solvent or liquid that we're going to use called methylene chloride. Now before we can use the methylene chloride, we really need to remove the caffeine and we're going to use an alkaline solution to do that. So what I have here is uh, a beaker with, equipped with a stir bar and I have two grams of the sodium carbonate. Now the reason that we're using the sodium carbonate is that in addition to caffeine, there are other, there's another component in here called tannins or um, some people call it gallic acid, which is a derivative of phenol. And caffeine loves water, it also loves methylene chloride. The tannins, if they're not at a salt formation, they also love methylene chloride. So if we make this solution basic, the gallic acid will form a salt, and all salts love water more than anything else. So once we add the water to this, in this alkaline solution, those tannins, i.e. gallic acid, will remain in the aqueous part. So when we add the methylene chloride, we don't have to worry about them transferring over with the caffeine. So first thing I'm gonna do, is add the 50 mils of distilled water. I'm gonna turn the temperature of that up and I'm gonna stir it. And uh, this should not take too long to dissolve. But once with this solution is almost at the boiling point, then what I'm gonna do is to lower three tea bags uh, into that and let and lower the temperature and let them heat there for about 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll move to the next step. As you can see the water is starting to boil so I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, stir bar. It's easier to remove now than later and then I'm going to cut the temperature down because we don't really want it boiling and then we're, I'm going to put these tea bags in there and just kind of submerge them and let them sit in there for about 10-15 uh, minutes. It's been uh, 15 minutes where this has been uh, soaking in. The tea bags have been immersed in that alkaline solution of sodium uh, carbonate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, pour off whatever liquid that's in there into a 100 milliliter beaker. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to use about 15 mils of uh, distilled water. I'm just going to kind of, and I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to pour that into that same beaker. kind of rinse anything that might still be present and I have to take care it, it's hard it, I, you don't really want to squeeze the tea bags too much just so you don't break anything open because we're trying to keep all the particulate properties back Now what I'm going to do here, I need to let this cool a little bit and then we'll start adding the methylene chloride and follow through with the, uh, the extraction. We're let, we've let this cool pretty much to room temperature, so now what we need to do is to add the methylene chloride to that so that we can extract the caffeine from all of this dark solution. In order for us to do that, we're going to use a piece of glassware that's called a separatory funnel. And the separatory funnel has a stopcock and you always, before you put anything in here, you want to make sure that this stopcock is closed and if it's closed, this, this is perpendicular to the stem, if you will. To open it, you, you can turn it any direction you would like. 
but always make sure that it's closed. The other thing is you always want to make sure that the ring stand is securely fastened to the um, the ring is securely fastened to the ring stand. And actually I'm going to just shift this a little bit. Just in case, let me raise that a little bit as well. I'm going to collect my uh, fractions in this uh, Erlenmeyer flask, and I think that's probably a good height uh, to have. You never want anything to be completely closed uh, surface, if you will, around that stem. So I'm going to use that to collect my fractions in. Now, the other thing about this separatory funnel I should mention is that it, it comes with um, a, a glass stopper, and these are what they call glass joints. And anytime you use this piece of equipment, you want to make sure that you grease the stopper. Uh, so, and when you put it in here, you want to make sure that you always rotate it just to make sure that everything is greased. The reason for that is, and you'll see this in a second, we're going to turn this stopper or separatory funnel upside down. And if, the, if there's not enough grease there, you can lose some of your solution through the stopper itself. So always use a funnel. So I'm going to put my funnel here, and then I'm going to add the solution, this mixture that has cooled down. And then to that, I'm going to add, oh, somewhere between 5 and 10 milliliters of the methylene chloride. Now, if you notice, we've already got two layers that's formed. This colorless solution that you see down at the bottom is the methylene chloride. But we need to mix this up a little bit because if we don't, we're never going to get all the caffeine to come out. So I'm going to open this up just a second and then put it back in. And then what you want to do, you want to shake and vent. You want to make sure that your finger is on top of the stopper. You want to turn it, shake a little bit, and vent. Shake a little bit, and vent. Shake, and vent. And then what we're going to do is to let that separate again. And we're hoping, if you can kind of tell that some of that brownish material is trying to get back up to the layer that it likes. So we're going to let that sit just for a minute or so. And what we want to drain off is the bottom layer, which is the methylene chloride. And in that layer, we're hoping is where the caffeine that was initially in this aqueous layer is now into the methylene chloride layer. I think they've separated the best they're going to. You always want to take the stopper off before you start uh, opening the stop clock because nothing will flow unless you release that pressure. So now I'm going to turn this and I'm going to err on the side of caution because each of these that I'm collecting, I'm going to have a little bit of that liquid left above. Now there's a downside to that because I'm losing material, but I also want them to sample as pure as I can get it. So what I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to set that aside and stopper it so that the methylene chloride doesn't evaporate. I'm going to do this two more times with more methylene chloride because usually when you do an extraction, ideally it's a good idea to wash it or what they call extract it about three times with the material that you're using or solvent I should say that we're using which in this case is the methylene chloride. Let that sit so the layers can separate again. Looks like separation has occurred. 
I'm going to collect this material in that same Erlenmeyer class that I used previously. Open the, take, remove the stopper, and then again drain that. Notice that I left just a little bit of that methylene chloride solution uh, there. I'm going to go back and add another 5 to 10 mils of the methylene chloride. You can see it's starting to separate, so give that a minute or two to separate. I think it is separated. I'm not seeing much of a change in the amount of layer here. So I think separation has occurred. So we're going to do the removal of that bottom layer. And again, I'm just going to try not to, and again, I'm going to lose some material by doing this. Now what I want to do next is, this is our methylene chloride that should have no aqueous material in it, i.e. water. There's always a possibility that some water could carry over into the organic layer, which is this methylene chloride. So to remove the water, what we want to do is to add a drying agent, which is sodium sulfate and hydrous. So I'm going to add just enough of this. And if there's any moisture there, you should see this clump up. And it looks like some pieces have clumped together. Uh, you just kind of, there's really no set amount that you add. You just add some at a time. And then if you don't notice any more clumping take place, then you pretty much have added enough. Just going to add one little, one amount more. And I think that should be good enough. And then what you want to do is stopper that fairly well. And we're going to let that sit for a good 10 minutes. And then we're going to remove this from the, the, um, the drying agent from the methylene chloride. Um, after separating the layers, I've noticed that there is a lighter layer in color here. Uh, I think this is more of an emulsion. So what I want to do is I want to go in and add some sodium chloride solution to that. Sometimes by adding a sodium chloride solution, that will help whatever is in that emulsified layer um, separate and go to their respective layers, if you will. I'm going to add another five mils. Um, I don't want to go overboard, but I think I'll add another five mils of the saturated sodium chloride solution. We'll let that sit there and see if any better separation occurs. It seems that I have a little bit more of the methylene chloride layer that has broken free from this emulsion. I'm going to collect that amount, but I think that's as far as I'll go. It could take all day trying to get every little bit coming from the emul emulsified layer. So I'm going to go ahead and add that amount. Now, when I let me just say this: when I added the sodium, the saturated sodium chloride solution, that's an aqueous. Uh, solution, so that's going to stay in the dark solution, so I don't have to worry about that contaminating my my sample that I want to purify here. I think I'm going to stop there, add it just a little bit more, give this another couple minutes to dry, and then once this is dried for another few minutes, I'm going to take this and filter this through a cotton plug into a pre-weighed round bottom flask. And then to remove the 
uh, methylene chloride, we'll put that in a hot water bath and boil off all the methylene chloride. 